Good afternoon, SC21 and SC21 teachers, and welcome to this short talk tracking SARS-CoV-2 using NetTrain. My name is Bob Gottwals, and I am a computational scientist and computational science educator at the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics in Durham, North Carolina. We are a uh, two-year junior and senior state-supported uh, residential high school an online program for academically gifted kids in the state of North Carolina. Um, so let me get my screen share on here so you can see some things that I'm doing. And there we go. And we believe, so I came to School of Science and Math from the Schroeder Education Foundation and from the North Carolina Supercomputing Center. And over a number of years, we've created the, what we think is the largest program in the computational sciences in the country. So we have 11 courses, and you can see uh, the list here. It's a pretty diverse uh, list of courses, including two research opportunities uh, in doing computational science. We also have access through the Exceed program to the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, so a uh, number of my students are working in high performance computing uh, using, using that resource. In the uh, summer of 2020, last summer, uh, just like many of you, um, we had to shut down our school because of the pandemic. And typically we have over 200 kids that come to uh, campus. They live on campus during the summer and they conduct research either on campus or with one of the uh, three major universities in the research triangle area. Needless to say, that was not an option last summer. Um, so um, what we were able to do is we created a virtual online, uh, online course uh, called Computing COVID-19. And this was a two week short course. Uh, we had over 80 students participate in this program. And during the first week, what they did is they looked at the structural biology of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and they used a wide variety of research-grade computing tools to be able to do that. In the second week, we uh, looked at medicinal chemistry issues, and the students were able to use, again, advanced computing software to uh, look at drug repurposing, drug design, drug interactions with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, and how all of that affects the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is the lab that we developed for uh, a unit uh, called Computing Genomic Epidemiology. And this unit used a, a tool called a uh, next strain, which uh, I'm going to show you right now. So this is a tool that was created by uh, the Fred Hutch Lab and a, a guy named Trevor Braddock, who just won the MacArthur Genius Award for his work in genomic epidemiology. So this is a very large scale, uh, large data set project. And uh, the sort of the the good news is it's updated on an hourly basis. Uh, the bad news is that it's updated on an hourly basis. And the reason that's bad news is for somebody who's trying to use this tool in class. When I designed the lab, uh, the answers were right. When I checked them the morning of the lab, by the afternoon when we got ready to do the lab, the answers had changed because the site had been updated over that period of time. So what you uh, see in using NextStrain is primarily uh, this thing that looks like a phylogenetic tree. So across the x-axis here, what you see is uh, are the dates um, and uh, measured in units of months, uh, unlike most phylogenetic trees in biology, which are measured in units of millions of years, okay? It also has a geography map uh, over here uh, that you can uh, look at uh, the various mutants or strains of the SARS-CoV-2 virus 
in different regions of the world. There's also some sequence analysis tools uh, down here below. There's some frequency charts. But the thing that uh, I really wanted my kids to use was this phylogenetic tree. There's a lot of options for what you can do here. So when you first log into Next Strain and go to the SARS-CoV-2 um, um, website uh, off, of the, off of the home page, it's showing you the, uh, the phylogeny of the mutated viruses by what's called a clade. And you can see uh, everybody, obviously, for appropriate reasons, is concerned about the, the, the Delta variant right now. And so those are in green. So what I can do is I can hover over, um, I can hover over one of these, these um, uh, strain mutations here. And so you get a little bit of information about this. So it talks about what nucleotides, which are the A, C's, T's, and G's. So it's telling you there uh, what should be uh, a cysteine, a C, at nucleotide position 1,594 has uh, mutated to a thymine. Um, so, um, uh, and then a couple other mutations. It's suggesting to you there that there are no amino acid mutations. And then if there's some other information about uh, the date that this was discovered. So you can see this is uh, June 8th of, of 2021 and it says what clade and uh, you can double click on, on these and get um, a, a lot more a lot more information. Um, so you can color these things by sampling date. You can color these things by Pango lineage. That's Pango is a, uh, a, a classification system for virus strains and virus mutations. So one of the things about um, using next strain, which you would find out if you use this in your classroom, is there's an awful lot of data being processed here. And that's telling me to wait. Okay, There's an awful lot of data being processed here. So um, that's always the danger of doing these things live. So when you click on new options here, there we go. Um, it, it does take a little while to, to sort of, sort of re refresh the, the screen here. Um, you can look at these phylogenetic trees. I'm actually going to e expand my screen here uh, a little bit to see if this maybe we can get you to see things a little, a little bigger here. Not going to let me do that. Um, so I can click on here, and again, it's always dangerous uh, picking on these things. There we go. Um, so I can click on a radial tree option. And again, these things do take a little while to process because it's doing all of this in in real time. And um, it can be, again, it's pulling in a lot of data. So it can happen a, a little bit slowly, not conducive to a 15-minute to a, a um, talk. Um, so you can look at these as rectangular. You can look at these as radial. You can look at these as an unrooted phylogenetic tree. You can look at this as a clock, which will show you the rate of mutation. So that's a really interesting thing uh, to be able to take a, take a look at. So there's lots of options there on, on what you can do. Um, I like uh, one of the activities that I really like is coloring these things by, it's going to let me get in there. Come on, let me in. I like uh, uh, looking at these by genotype. And if you've paid attention to the discussions about SARS CoV 2, you know that it's the spike protein, the S gene that is where most of the action is occurring. So I'm looking at my genotype here. I can look at the envelope. I can look at the membrane. I can look at these open reading frames. Uh, there's a variety of things that I can look at. But I want to look at the, the S, the spike gene. And 
an interesting article appeared in the Washington Post. Uh, and again, this is back in back in July of, of, of 2020. Uh, both the Washington Post and the New York Times have done a really good job of creating graphics to describe um, a whole variety of issues related to SARS-CoV-2 and related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So here's an example of that. So what they're describing there, there they show a picture of a spike protein, spike gene, uh, which is the uh, protein that connects itself to the ACE2, the acet um, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 protein, which is actually on the host cell. And what they're showing here is that one of the really important mutations that have increased the ability of this virus to get into cells is this D614G mutation. So amino acid number 614 okay, should be a D and aspartic acid, but it has mutated to a G, which is now a glycine. And because of that mutation, that has really enhanced the effect, infectiousness, infectiousness of this particular, um, of this particular uh, mutation. Okay? So I can go in here okay, and I can say, I can look for that 614. Okay? So I'm on the, and you can see how slow this thing can be. There we go. All right. And okay. now, uh, there we go. Okay. So there we go. So now you can see okay, the green ones, which is what we had early on in the, in the pandemic, okay, uh, what was a D, but relatively quickly, okay, it mutated to this G amino acid. Okay. There's also uh, some A's in there. But the primary, so you can see that this mutation of the, the D uh, aspartic acid, amino acid being the, the wild type, uh, the type that it, 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 the virus came with, mutating to uh, a G, um, the glycine uh, happened, happened pretty, quick, pretty quickly in the game. So... Uh, when we created this lab for the Computing COVID-19 course, uh, we gave the students lots of different options on uh, types of experiments that they could do. Uh, they could certainly, um, they could go here and they could look at, um, instead of a, a global uh, transmission of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, they could look at the uh, spread of, of that virus just in North America or just in China or just in um, some other country. And so you can also go down here and there's all kinds of options that you can search by here in terms of, of coloring these things. And again, there you see the US. So again, if you, uh, you basically go find, uh, and so if I, I just, there was a North Carolina one a minute ago, it just jumps around a lot because there's a lot of data. So, uh, you know, you can hover over these things and you can learn a lot about um, what, the, what the nucleotide mutations might be, what the amino acid mutations might be, and, and how that, that plays out in the, um, in, in the timeline. So this next strain tool is a tremendous uh, computing tool. It's a tremendous example of how data science and high performance computing are being used to the benefit of humankind. And if you, especially if you are a biology teacher, it makes a great uh, interactive tool. This is real data, real high performance computing. It's not, there's no canned simulation here. It's, it's the real deal. So it's a great thing to do uh, with um, high school kids and even middle school kids, uh, especially those who are, are studying biology. So I hope uh, if you have questions about
Um, if you have questions about how to use NextStrain, if you uh, want to get a copy of the, the lab, if, um, if there's anything I can do to help you uh, integrate more computing uh, into your science classrooms, uh, I would welcome the opportunity to do that. And my email is gotwals, my last name, G-O-T-W-A-L-S, at ncssm.edu. That's the North Carolina School of Science and Math. Okay, thanks for uh, watching in and hope to see you online.